This CSW research is about people's experiences with punishments issued by a moderation system. My name is Yu Boko. I'm assistant professor from Penn State. Moderation research has gained much attention in recent years. How moderation is designed and implemented varies a lot across online platforms, but it tends to follow a general cycle like this. After a user submits content, such as a post on Reddit or a video on YouTube, it could be flagged by other users or moderation algorithms for violating platform rules. Once flagged, the moderation system reviews and adjudicates on it. If the moderation system decides that the content does contain violations, it issues penalties to the user in forms such as warning, content removal, or account suspension. Keep the general moderation cycle in mind. A lot of empirical and the design work has been done to understand and design for what happens within the moderation cycle, such as improving the efficiency and accuracy of moderation, enhancing legitimacy and justice in moderation systems, labor and practice in, of moderate moderators, and explanations of moderation decisions. However, there is relatively little attention to the implications and the effects of punishments. But punishment is no simple matter. Punished users face a lot of challenges in terms of understanding why they're punished and whether and how to improve. Platforms usually provide limited support and punished users are mostly left on their own. Thus, this project set out to understand the punishment experience and explore design that could improve it. Theoretically, the work is in, informed by several strands of thought, such as Foucault's discussion of punishment as a disciplinary device, Zuboff's work on how contemporary networked platforms collectively structure people's experience, and Paul's work on how video game culture prioritizes meritocracy instead of other values and has severe toxic consequences. The study site is League of Legends, one of the most popular games today. League of Legends has a highly competitive player culture where players admire or aspire to high ranks. League of Legends is also notorious for its players' toxicity where players exhibit lots of toxicity towards their teammates and opponents, especially when their game doesn't go well. To manage toxicity, the game runs an automated moderation system to review player behavior and issue penalties. The severe risk penalty is a permanent ban, like the screenshot on the right. We analyzed how players discussed permanent ban on the League of Legends subreddit and identified five distinct discourses about it. Our highest level observation is that players have developed different perspectives on punishment in terms of its function, philosophy, and end goal, which in turn challenges the disciplinary effects of punishment. There are many findings in the paper, but here I will focus on one theme running through all the discourses. The theme I'm going to talk about is how those discourses frame those who have been permanently banned. First, it is almost a consensus that whoever have been permanently banned deserves a punishment and are among the most toxic people in the community. It's reflected in the game publisher's words, such as so negative or disruptive, and the player's words citing the game publisher's statistics to indicate how extreme those people are. Second, players use languages to signal that whoever gets banned are not normal and are disparate, and that there is a clear line between those who are banned and those who are not. 
Third, player discourses are often directed at the game publisher for not trying to ban most toxic behavior on players for good. They believe that banned players would come back because the game company wants to make money from them. When those banned players come back, they become even more toxic because they care less about their new accounts. Lastly, the player discourses also suggest that permanent bans do not catch the, all the toxic players because toxic players are also good at gaming the moderation system. These findings tell us a lot about what permanent ban produces within the community. If the goal of punishment is to discipline community members into well-behaved ones, or to impose knowledge about what constitutes acceptable behaviors, then permanent ban certainly fails to do so. Instead, it imposes a particular kind of knowledge that associates people who are banned with the label of most toxic player. As a result, it helps produce a social stereotype of most toxic players. And this small group of people simply do not belong to the community and should be excluded. The problem with this social stereotype is that it orients the discussion of toxicity away from the everyday toxicity that many players might commit, such as cursing or being AFK in a game, as if it is, quote unquote, most toxic players who are solely responsible for toxicity in the community. Beneath the logic of punishment, there is this assumption that the community will be fine as long as there is a good moderation system that could identify and kick out the most toxic players. This, unfortunately, is a simplistic and re reductive way to consider toxicity. However, this is not a call to abandon punishments for good. Instead, we should consider what are better ways to design punishments in order to deliver messages to the community. And uh, what are the ways to support punished users? by either the platform or the community. Thanks so much for watching this video. Many thanks to the anonymous reviewers for their constructive comments. The work is supported by the National Science Foundation.